AMD's Ryzen 5 series has always been a consumer's favorite, at least for quite some time while prices were still attractive. So how does the performance compare between the following three Ryzen 5 generations? 7600X versus 5600X versus 3600X. Should you even be thinking about an upgrade? As always, let's kick things off with the price. In February 2023, for the 7600X, you're shelling out 240 to 270 US dollars, whereas the predecessor, 5600X, you can pick up for about 160 to 180 dollars. Realistic pricing for the now slightly dated 3600X, I am not going to name today, since those no longer make a whole lot of sense. Cores and threats. It here too needs to be said that AMD is sticking to their 6 core 12 thread layout over the course of 3 generations. Specifications While between those two AIM4 models there barely are any noteworthy differences and clock speeds noticeable, things take a different turn as far as their AIM5 based successor is concerned. Unfortunately, that also goes to show in terms of TDP, but credit where it's due, we see twice as much L2 cache, along with integrated Radeon graphics and a recent processor. Test setup. The 7600X is taking a nice comfy seat on the ASRock B650 Pro RS motherboard. In the meantime, the 5600X and 3600X are enjoying themselves on the ASRock X570PG Velocita. Taking on GPU duty, needless to say, is my usual ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC. And as far as the memory for the AM5 system is concerned, the Kingston Fury Beast RGB DDR5 6000 MHz 32GB CL36 RAM. On the AM4 systems we're looking at G-Skill Flare X DDR4 3200MHz 16GB CL14 memory. Of course, I did pay close attention not to influence the results by the actual capacity. Clock speeds. Between the 3600X and 5600X, there is a small bump in clock speed noticeable, but that's nothing when compared against what kind of beastly bump the 7600X is offering. Coming from one generation to another, when looking at boost clocks, we see noteworthy gains there, but not really much of a surprise that the 7600X's boost clock is on a whole different level. That's one hell of an impressive gain, it's all I can say here. Performance, productivity. Let's get started with Cinebench R23. Coming from Zen 2 to 3, we're witnessing a performance gain of 16%. We move uphill fairly quickly by 34% from Zen 3 to 4 in the multicore test. In the single core test, Zen 3 offers 19% higher performance over the Zen 2 model. 25% is what we are seeing on Zen 4 as opposed to Zen 3. 7-zip benchmark. Here the 5600X is about 25% ahead of the 3600X. The 7600X then is overtaking the 5600X by 28%. Things look very similar in the V-Ray 5 benchmark. Zen 3 offering 30% more performance over Zen 2, with Zen 4 then being able to top Zen 3 by 36%. In the Corona rendering benchmark, Zen 3 is completing its test run 17% quicker than Zen 2. Zen 4, on the other hand, comes out on top with a similar 19% shorter rendering duration compared to Zen 3. Blender Open Data Here the 5600X manages a gain of 13% over the 3600X. The new 7600X distances itself by a whopping 43% over the 5600X. That's quite remarkable. Things normalize in the handbrake test. Zen 3 for instance being 14% faster than Zen 2. The same task is being completed 25% faster by Zen 4 compared to Zen 3. Having arrived in the Vegas Pro 20 test, Zen 3 manages an uplift over Zen 2 by 17%. Zen 4 then is clearly taking it up a notch and is getting the same work done 27% faster compared to its predecessor Zen 3. Gaming In 3D Mark Time Spy, the 5600X is overtaking the 3600X by 15%. The 7600X in turn is doing 25% better than the 5600X though. Assassin's Creed Valhalla 
As I've already noticed in past comparisons, for whatever reasons, there's weirdly no practical difference between Zen 2 and 3 in this specific game title. Therefore, it does not really come in as a surprise that Zen 4 is shining with a 50% lead over Zen 3. We are talking of similar 47% when it comes to those 1% low results. Moving on to Borderlands 3. Zen 3 on average is offering 33% more FPS over Zen 2 and also 28% higher 1% lows. Zen 4 then on average manages a gain of 17% over Zen 3 and 21% in the lows department. Cyberpunk 2077. Obviously the 3600X clearly being stuck knee deep in a CPU bottleneck. With the 5600X we are therefore already seeing 33% better results. Additionally, we are dealing with a whopping 72% gain in terms of minimum values. That's insane. Nonetheless, there's still room for improvement, something the 7600X makes clear with its 26% higher frame rate compared to even Zen 3. Furthermore, Zen 4 is capable of a 55% uplift in those 1% lows over Zen 3. A fairly similar story can be witnessed in the game Far Cry 6. The Zen 2 based 3600X isn't looking that good here either. We are once more experiencing a CPU bottleneck. Meaning Zen 3 already offering 22% higher FPS and 18% smoother lows. Taking it up a notch with Zen 4, we are looking at 25% more performance. That's even 34% in the 1% lows. In Forza Horizon 5, Zen 3 on average is running 10% faster than Zen 2. In the 1% lows, that's 15%. Zen 4 then is speeding up noticeably, in the end being 19% faster than Zen 3, and especially in those lows, we're looking at a lead by respectable 38%. GTA 5 yet again makes the 3600X look fairly dated, since we are yet again restricted by a CPU bottleneck. The 5600X is already doing 38% better, also bringing 34% smoother minimum values to the table. Zen 4 compared to Zen 3 is only 6% faster in this slightly older title and doesn't even offer that much more with a 9% uplift as far as 1% lows are concerned. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we too witness yet another Zen 2 bottleneck. Its successor Zen 3 already managing 27% higher performance and 16% higher lows. Credit where it's due, with Zen 4 we're looking at a lead of another 24% over Zen 3 and even 35% when glancing over to the 1% lows. We are slowing down slightly in Metro Exodus. On average, Zen 3 coming from Zen 2 goes to show a 12% performance improvement, even though there is a slight drop in 1% lows there. That's not exactly the first time this happened with Zen 3 in this specific game. We're only speaking of a 6% gain when comparing average results moving from Zen 3 to 4. Due to Zen 3 having a few issues here, we see a nice 35% lead by Zen 4 in the 1% low department. In Red Dead Redemption 2, Zen 3 is performing 15% better than Zen 2, that's a mere 2% uplift in lows. On average, the Zen 4 model is only 6% faster than Zen 3 here and also only manages 12% higher 1% lows compared to Zen 3. Rise of the Tomb Raider is one of those games that yet again clearly points out the 3600X being an obvious CPU bottleneck. So no wonder Zen 3 is doing 30% better while being 42% smoother in the lows. Transitioning from Zen 3 to 4, we are looking at 19% more frames per second and 22% in terms of 1% lows. Last but not least, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And once more, Zen 2 is on the brink of being a bottleneck. Zen 3 already capable of displaying 32% higher results on average, and that being even 37% in the minimum department. Zen 4 as opposed to Zen 3 on the other hand, then only manages a 12% uplift, but does greatly impress in the noticeably higher 1% lows, we are talking of 47%. Gaming average FPS. Even in those average values of those 11 games I've tested, we see a clear and fairly negative pattern as far as the 3600X is concerned. 
that smells like a bunch of CPU bottleneck. With the 5600X, we're already doing 24% better on average and 22% in the lows. A 7600X compared to the 5600X then only manages a 17% higher performance, but to be fair, goes to show 29% smoother 1% lows. Power consumption and temperatures. Undoubtedly, the efficiency crown goes to the 5600X based on Zen 3. It consumes 11% less power than its predecessor 3600X while offering noticeably higher performance. The recent 7600X kind of paints a fairly negative picture here, drawing 45% more power from the wall over the 5600X. Even at idle, Zen 4 seemingly requires 27% more juice. That's a bit disappointing to say the least. Of course, I'd like to mention that those AMD Ryzen 7000 processors can easily be optimized, meaning I could achieve much more attractive results even with the flagship 7950X without losing out on any performance. The same can be done for the temperatures because the 7600X clearly runs noticeably hotter than the CPUs that came before it. As far as power consumption and temperatures are concerned, within this price range, it would make a whole lot more sense to just pick up one of those non-X Zen 4 processors instead. Basically, the regular 7600 non-X, that is, if you don't want to deal with any manual optimizations. Conclusion Without a doubt, the 7600X in pretty much all aspects that can be named is performing better and an upgrade of the CPU alone wouldn't even be that expensive. That is, if we were to ignore the fact we need to move over to a whole new platform, making such a move quite an investment. Now once we glance over pricing of a somewhat decent AM5 motherboard and fitting DDR5 RAM, we're looking at a pretty hefty amount of money there. At the end of the day, it's questionable whether or not it's really worth the performance uplift. So before you upgrade from a 3600X or 5600X to a 7600X, you should probably give an upgrade within the AM4 platform a second thought to minimize costs. However, we still need to talk about the 3600X here. Obviously, an RTX 3090 seemingly is already enough for the 3600X to pose a CPU bottleneck. The Zen 2 CPU is not only holding back a graphics card within this performance tier at Full HD 1080p, but even at a resolution of WQHD 1440p with the only exception probably being 4K UHD, where you won't be held back. So the 3600X based on Zen 2 is on the verge of being somewhat obsolete if you care for every last drop of performance. We are still doing fairly okay with the 5600X Zen 3 processor though. I mean, things could be better, but at least the CPU doesn't hold us back as quickly. At the end of the day, it simply comes down to the GPU we're planning on using. Of course, I don't want to dictate anything here. You aren't necessarily forced to upgrade just yet, but that's something you have to decide on your own anyway. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.